We need kids raised with strong moms yeah. and dads who love each other and sent out into the world. And so, you know, the good that we want to see God do in the world has to start at home. Well, hey, everyone, welcome to Framework Leadership, a podcast about principles and ideas you can use today to take your leadership to the next level. I'm your host, Kent Ingle, president of Southeastern University. And I'm your host, co-host, Michael Steiner, vice president for innovation. And man, we are excited to introduce our guest for today's show, Levi Lesko. Levi is the founder, lead pastor of Fresh Life Church. He's also uh, a best-selling, amazing author, podcast host, husband, father of five. I mean, you're doing it all. Oh, and, man. Uh, Opening grocery stores, uh, cutting yeah. ribbons, you know, all the things. <laughs> but we're grateful you're with us today. Thanks for uh, coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me back on. You guys are awesome. Yeah, Love that's it. good. Love it. You know, uh, here at SEU, we always strive to find a lot of innovative ways to um, further serve the, the local church. I'd love to start off our conversation by talking about the recent seminar project that we had the chance to yeah. uh, uh, launch with with your church, which is designed really to, in many ways, bridge the gap between biblical studies, theology, practical needs of, of, of the local church. And, and you actually hosted the first seminar, which was held at, at, uh, at Fresh Life in Montana. Tell us about what tools you think today pastors can take away from something like that, or ministry leaders. How does this contribute to the growth and development of leaders? Yeah, great question. Well, first of all, I can't come on without expressing my gratitude for SEU. Mm-hmm. You guys, uh, what, you've, what you've done is amazing, but you have stayed so uh, rooted with the local church. And mm-hmm. through our partnership with Fresh Life Leadership College, we've just absolutely loved having that as a part of our pipeline mm-hmm. with our residency, the internship that, you know, just to, to see, okay, what is this going to look like for someone to gr- go from graduating high school all the way to being mm-hmm. at a place where they're ready to enter the marketplace or being on a church staff, yeah. whether ours or someone else. So we've, we're so grateful for our partnership, you guys' faithfulness, and generosity. Um, but specifically, a, a couple of years ago, we just really started to feel like we need to focus more on how we develop a staff member mm-hmm. to be opened up to more opportunities. I think at our worst mm-hmm. in the church and any anywhere, once someone's in a role, we can kind of see that as a little bit of a dead end. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They're just, hey, keep making that widget, you know, as opposed mm-hmm, to, right. hey, what does opportunities for advancement look like? Uh, and I think Honestly, this next generation is craving millennials and Gen Z, part of that kind of Mm -hmm. trigger happy on the quit button that we felt the last few years is some amount of like energy of like, I just want to see new things. And I think if we can harness and channel that, and I feel like our team really does um, breathe out a sigh of like, ah, when they know that we are going, hey, we want to develop you. Mm -hmm. We want to give you opportunities and tools to take you to the next level, whatever that might look like, whether here or Mm -hmm. somewhere else. And so we came up with the idea of uh, the theological boot camp as a Mm -hmm. strategy for ongoing growth. And this year, for the first time, we got to host one with SEU seminars and have two of your doctors come out and do two days intense mm-hmm. training. I mean, it was on, honestly drinking from a fire hose. Wow. Yeah. Two eight-hour days of lectures, uh, just a couple little breaks in there. And we covered from, we went from Jesus, this time it was church history focus. So we went yeah. from Jesus' ascension to 2024. Wow. And said, let's catch up on all these, what's in between. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. Right. Which right. was really, I felt like the greatest thing about that was we all tend to feel like whatever moment we're living in in church history is the hardest and the worst. Right. We right. dramatize yeah. and, over, you know, right. nothing's ever been too crazy. It's mm-hmm. like, hold on. Hold yeah. on. Let's talk about the plagues. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about yes. the Inquisition. Let's right. talk about. There's been lots right. of crazy ones, and guess what God's done? Yeah, Both kept His promise to build good. His yeah. church. Yeah. Right. Every single. So one. those two days were great. The the faculty you guys sent out were so kind. That our staff loved being poured into the, by them. But then we also thought, hey, they're here. Let's not um, miss the chance for our wider church sure. to yeah. get sure. this chance. So we yeah. did something called Theology After Dark. Oh, that's. And incredible. we had two hours, and anybody in the church that wanted to buy um, a. a it was nominal, but mm-hmm. I figured let's get some skin in the game. Yeah. The cost was more just so it meant something to people. Yeah. Yep. Um, and they had two hours of kind of like a crash course theology day wow. uh, evening. And that was fantastic too. Yeah. Yeah. And this is something we're seeing in a, a lot of churches are hosting variations of this, whether they're connected with Southeastern and SU seminars or they're bringing in house things. I've seen different levels of this. This seems to be, like you said, this is a, a bigger hunger, not just for staff, but also for the congregations themselves. Can you speak to that? 
why is that? I mean, why is this all of a sudden people are asking, hey, I want to know about the last 2,000 years of church history and what yeah. that means for that. Where is that kind of coming from well, for us I today? Mean, if we look at, if we step back a little bit, what is the, what is the deconstruction kind yeah. of movement? I think yeah. in, in large part, it's this sort of stuff not happening. Right. right. Yep. So, so deconstruction maybe just is is partially because it wasn't constructed properly in the first place. Right. So, I think uh, the church kind of maybe is realizing that, mm -hmm. maybe in awareness of such a hunger to have big front doors, mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. big seeker, the seeker sensitive movement, the you know the ev heavy evangelism, being so good at that. It can, at its worst, the shadow side of that is you create Christianity that's a mile wide and an inch thin, right. and where people don't have the tools to withhandle the rigors of hard living. Right. You yeah. know, and the truth is, if you just, if, hey, God's for me, and that's great, Jeremiah 29, 11, let's go. You know, it's right. like, then you suffer, and the devil wants to, parable of sower and seeds, cause yep. the sun to come up and that to kind of like wither and deconstruct, mm -hmm. right? So I think kind of the need for this and the hunger for it is, hey, I need a theology and a an understanding of who God is that can handle suffering. Right. Yeah, yeah. And that's so fascinating about a subject like church history, right? I, I was fascinated when I heard that that was the subject we wanted to talk about because, you know, you've, you've got the Bible and the Bible's great, but to see over the years how people of the faith have negotiated the Bible, have pulled the Bible into their various contexts and actually lived it out helps you understand the verses even in a whole different way. What was kind of the impact of your congregation and church specific, or your staff specifically about church history? What yeah. were some of the insights they Well, I up? think a lot of them, and this is maybe not a compliment to me as a leader, a lot of them were like, I did not know a lot of that. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, like, sure. And I'm like, oh, well, I should have probably taught you better, I guess. But, <laughs> but the... the um, the first one we did, this wasn't our first one. No. So the first time we did it, we, we brought Dr. Joel Mutamale in mm -hmm. from Proverbs 31, and he did, um, his doctoral dissertation was on um, uh, the book of Ephesians. Mm. So he did a two-day walking, a crawl through the book of Ephesians. Wow. And that was amazing. Yeah. And I just thought, we could do another book of the Bible or something, but I just thought, man, I feel, I really feel like it helps me all the time. I, I went to mm -hmm. um, uh, a semester of school in York, England, and my church history class in, in England, which you're surrounded right. by ruins yeah, of like yeah. where Constantine was sure. like crowned exactly. emperor. You exactly. know? Yeah. Um, so I feel like I always go back to that in my mind. Mm. Like, hey, hold on. Let's, let's think about it. God yeah. was good when Gutenberg was printing the Bible. Yeah. He's going to figure it out his way. Um, so I thought, I want our team to have that. And honestly, I will say this. The last two years, we've had the lowest staff turnover of, of any year in the last 10 years. Really? Wow. So, you know, I'm not saying that's all that, but I do think young people want to feel like they're being developed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you, you know, when you talk about these amazing seminars and opportunities to, to do just that, how, do, how does it really foster a deeper sense of discipleship discipleship and community within churches? How can it serve mm -hmm. that? Well, I think people are going to spread that. I uh, think it makes yeah. them, I heard so many people, I mean, I'm a, this, this wet my appetite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to grow further. Uh, we, of course, your team in faculty was so great to give us, hey, if you want to learn more about this, here's the next three resources sure. I recommend. Mm -hmm. But then you also have um, the, the natural desire for this to be disseminated within small groups and within teams yeah. and departments. And so, so I think it does foster, yeah. like you're saying, yeah. the subject, but it also I think wet the appetite a lot and we're exploring more what this looks like for our staff who mm. want to pursue sure. ongoing educational, sure. you know, opportunities, yeah. which through our partnership mm. with SEU and Fresh Life Leadership College, that's tailor-made, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and so even subsidizing that to some degree for staff, like just having it be like, hey, this, this is great, but what's that next level? How yeah. do you, right. if you, if this really lights a fire inside of you, mm -hmm. here's the tools yeah. to, to develop that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah and, I, and I love this focus on developing your staff and keeping, you know, that low turnover because you're meeting not just job, you know, salary, that kind of thing, but actually personal development, you're growing them on that side of it. So what advice would you give for a pastor that's like, hey, this sounds super interesting. I'd love to... How how can I get this going in my church? Like, what what advice would you give? Well, one eight hundred, right? Operator, <laughs> right. Uh, SEU, and operator. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you're honestly, ready you guys, to take your call. I know that this is something, and we were so great when I first called Justin and yeah. said, "Hey, this is, I want to kind of." He was like, "Man, this is this has been in my heart for a long time." Yeah, and I love that that you guys aren't just about your university. Right. You know, it's yeah. like you have the sites, you have the you know the larger thing, but it, this really is something I know that there's a hunger for y'all to do to resource mm -hmm. local yep. churches right. doing what they do better, and there's such a part partnership there. Yep. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yep. You know, you guys have all of this amazing faculty and, and, and to, so to bring that in, it, it really does work yeah. well. Yeah. So, so yeah. if you know Justin, call him. 
He'll yeah. help you out. Yeah, yeah, Justin's yeah. cell phone number. Uh, yeah. Beat him on the pickleball court and uh, then uh, bring him. There bring you go. Him that yeah. works. So. That works. Hey, I, I think it's a little over a year ago you released a new book with your wife, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, the Marriage Devotional. What? Tell us all what's behind that and how that came about. Okay. Well, true, true, true story. We were like kind of wanting to write the marriage devotional that we wish we could find on the shelves. I feel like marriage devotionals either are not practical enough or not theological enough. Yeah. So either they'll be very dense uh, when it comes to the, tr- the, the scriptures or uh, really pr- practical and vulnerable, but not always kind of that boat. Mm-hmm. And I wanted some th- verses you could sink your teeth into, yep. but then also to be like, hey, can we raise our hands up and go, marriage is uh, really hard. We've right. been married 20 years yeah. this April and it's challenging. We've mm-hmm. you know survived as a marriage, the death of a child, which is statistically mm-hmm. a deal breaker usually for, mm-hmm. uh, for, for husband and wife. And so we've learned some hard lessons going through grief, facing loss, and we um, wanted to offer up our notes Mm -hmm. to help people in a way that was both uh, true to scripture, but also life-giving. And so we came up with the marriage devotional, 52 days to strengthen the soul of your marriage. And it's formatted to where you could go through it with your spouse once a week for a whole year. Right. And then we thought, just read it. There's questions, activities, there's there's suggested suggested prayers, places to write each other love notes back and forth. Yeah. yeah. And then you could maybe on your date night chat with each other about it and be like, hey, what'd you learn? And mm-hmm. you know, I, I wanted also it to be a little bit low barrier. Yeah. So that like a, a maybe someone new to the faith who's yeah. intimidated by a larger book on the subject. Subject, it, where they could, and also we we wanted to pass the airplane test. The cover had to be masculine enough to where a man would not be embarrassed to be to flying. There it is. To, so to the cover is black that's, and white. It's, it's not flowery, right, you know. Right, right. So you couldn't read it on an airplane. You right, know? right, right. You don't that's feel bad awesome. if your wife says, "Hey, can we do this? You do this together," and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I feel like we're we're in such a unique time when you talk about marriage, right? So millennials, they're just now starting to get married. A lot of them, a lot of them, getting married later, or they're asking questions. Should I get married? And all. Tell us a little bit from the work you're doing in your church and even from this book, what are some of the questions that this generation is asking about marriage and how are you approaching that? Well, I think a lot of them uh, saw their parents' as marriage divorced, it, yep. you know, end in divorce and, and kind of got burnt on it. And so, yeah, there's that's what you're saying, a little bit of the pullback on it. And and as a result, you have a longer period where you're dating. It's far more challenging to, to walk yeah, out a call right. to purity and holiness yeah. in, in that in a longer time and even a longer engagement, mm-hmm. you know? Getting engaged and being engaged three years, good grief. I don't think I could have made it through yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so yeah. I think, uh, and I, so one of the things that's really on Jenny and I's heart is, hey, it's, it is possible. And it's yeah. not only possible, but it is God's plan to mm-hmm. to use the marriage bed and the marriage to literally be a vehicle mm-hmm. for evangelism. And Psalm 128 says, uh, it pictures this man who fears God, a couple that ha- mm-hmm. is, is, is loving each other, kids like olive plants. And then it says at the end of the Psalm, and so shall Zion be blessed. Yeah. So I kind of like look at it this way, um, save the home, save the world. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. We all want the world changed. Yeah. Well, you know what? We need kids raised with strong moms yeah. and dads who love each other and sent out into the world. And so, you know, the good that we want to see God do in the world has to start at home. And that, I have a real passion for that. Yeah. Love it. I love the way in, in the book, it's, it's really creative the way you and your wife took turns writing sections, telling stories to, to present things from different perspectives. Do you feel like this way of writing has helped you reach that broader audience in a pretty significant way? I hope so. Thank mm-hmm. you for saying that. Yeah. I mean, the book is the book starts with us falling down on a bike ride in Chicago <laughs> and getting into a huge fight. Yeah. So right. right right at the gate, we want you to know there's no halos here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Jenny writes in her voice on her chapters. I write in mine. Then some we wrote together. Mm. And th- doing the audio book was especially fun because uh, her days in the studio with her, me, and then we would do our chapters together and we would like kind of like fight, but yeah. like yeah. Mom mockingly fight as we went <laughs> right, through right. it so that you could even listen to it on the way to your date night, you yeah, know what I mean? In exactly. the car. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it is engaging, keeps you kind of mm-hmm. reading along. I know I would yep. like to read a book written that yeah, way, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. so. Oh, that's great. So we, go ahead. No, f- fire away. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was going to, what I'm curious about, and this kind of goes back to you, is, is we have a lot of listeners right there. They're post-grad, right? And, you know, I had a lot of friends and there's a lot of them that feel like they kind of miss the marriage boat if they're post-grad, right? The world's open. I'm single. What do I do? And all that kind of stuff. What kind of advice would you give for them in that season if they want to get married, but they're still trying to figure out and they're navigating all these apps and DMs and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Like, how do they navigate that world? What kind of advice would you give for them I mean, them there? my advice would be, you know, go to the end in your mind mm-hmm. and reverse engineer it. 
you know, so like I, I knew I wanted to serve. I felt a call since I was, you know, just saved to preach and to the church and ministry. And so it wasn't like go out, find mm. someone and then try and convince them to get that same calling. It was like, mm. I want to find someone doing what yeah, I'm yeah. doing. So it was not like I have to bait and switch. Right. Mm -hmm. So Jenny and I, we met um, in youth ministry and she was a volunteer. I was uh, the assistant to the youth pastor. And, and we met doing that. Like, so for, for we, and we started talking, it's like, oh my gosh, I, I was a volunteer janitor right after yeah, I said, yeah. she's like, I was too. I've cleaned yeah. toilets for Jesus. I'm like, that's that. And so, okay, yeah. let's, so what was great was we were able to just keep doing it together. Yeah. yeah. And neither yeah. of us had to be like, Hey, no, you should come to church next Thursday. Yeah, yeah. So I would just say, if what's the call of God in your life, yeah. if the house of God and his presence mm -hmm. and, 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 and his work in the world and the missionary call, mm -hmm. um, is it? It, then find someone who has that and then you won't you won't have to like trick them um so people are always like oh montana because jenny grew up in california i okay. and okay. we now live in montana and people are like that must have been hard but we both had put our hands up and said here my god send me wow so like we both laugh like mm. if we would say yes to ubekistan we would mm. say yes to you know sydney anything god wants mm. the answer is yes what's the question mm. and if you both have the, you see the world like that yeah, yeah then marriage together will be a lot easier. I mean, God told Isaiah in Isaiah 6, go to preach, they'll never listen yep. until the cities have all been taken captive. That's how mm. I want you to do something that's not going to work. Yeah. And I want you to do it until everyone's gone. And wow. you know what Isaiah said? When do we start? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if you find someone who has that heart before God's right. throne, yep. then doing life together will be a joy. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Wow. That's great. Hey, we want to move into our fire round. You know what that's all about. You've been on the show before. We ask you three quick questions and uh, it helps to grab some practical uh, pieces of advice for our le uh, listeners who are, are with us today. So uh, let's just do three quick questions. Michael, you fire away. Cool. So uh, as a pastor, what do you think is the number one issues pastors need to be researching, thinking about, um, really integrating into their leadership for this generation, this time in society? What can you do today? that God could use to reach your grandkids through. Mm. Always legacy, marble, life yeah. after, you know, so I'm, I'm always thinking, what, who can I reach today that God could use to set into motion events that's going to help reach my grandkids? So it's yeah. generational. Love it. What do you think's uh, a number one way to get the next gen uh, prepared to lead? Give them opportunities before they're ready. Ah, before mm. they're ready. Um, I see in my, I know myself, they, people put me in to do things. I'm like, I looking back, I'm like, I wasn't ready for yeah, that. I was right. so green. I planted our church when I was 24. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't ready. And yet I hear my team sometimes and I, and myself yeah. say of somebody, ah, you know, they're a little green. They're not ready. Well, that's, that's the perfect chance to right. get the, the opportunity, but we tend to, it's like an, an, an NIMBY. Have you heard of that? Mm. NIMBY? Yep. Yeah. Not in my backyard. Yep. Right. We, as long as we're in the neighborhood, now we want to have a high barrier to the yeah. neighborhood. Right. Not in my backyard. Yeah. But to, like, were you glad to get into the neighborhood? Well, yeah. yeah. You know, so I think wow. we have to be gracious. It's do, don't do the elevator turn. Once mm -hmm. you turn in the elevator, now you're annoyed every store, floor it stops at, mm -hmm. but you weren't annoyed when it picked you up. When it picked it up. Yep. yep. So I love good. it. Fight that. Yeah. I Great. love that. Last question. Um, what do you think's next for the church, especially in America? What What's next? Where it's going? Where What do we need to be thinking about there? Cold plunge baptisms. There we go. <laughs> Wim, Wim Hof breathing, yes, cold plunge yes. baptisms, yes. uh, gluten-free communion. On <laughs> Absolutely. No, I'm sorry. What's really? next for the church? <laughs> yeah. You know, I think in all seriousness, I was just chatting with Carrie Newhoff about this. I feel... Um, Church online is what it is. I'm not hateful. I'm not mad. I'm, I'm going to use it. I'm going to keep sending out podcasts. Uh, Gutenberg did it, so we should do it, right? Um, me meaning using mm -hmm. the most cutting edge media delivery vehicle available yep. to you. The first a AM, your radio guy like me, I was raised in a radio station. Yeah. First AM radio broadcast ever was was r r the the Christmas Carol, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That whole story. Yep. Reg Reginald Reg Reginald yeah. Exactly. Um, first words on the Telegram were what hath God. Our phone was what hath God wrought. Right. Yeah. Uh, Gutenberg Bible. So I think the church has a, a responsibility to always utilize these tools. Billy Graham on the mm -hmm. on right. cr cr yeah. televising cr yeah. cr crusades, but. I think what we, the church within the four walls of our church should be asking ourselves is what can about the experiences not go out online? Mm. 
Mm. And I think that's that's it. And I think it's the moments between songs. I think it's it's the it's the presence, it's the impartation. I think it, those things. The more we lean into that, yeah. and less about the scripted programming stuff. The kind of you know, it's 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 Asbury. It's what eighteen yeah. minutes at Passion. Everyone's talking right. about yeah. right. Those are the moments that people are craving mm. that they can't get in podcast form. Yeah, and I think right. the more not as a tool because yeah. that we don't want to become Hoffney and Phineas here right. with our strange yeah, fire. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, let's conjure up some really great <laughs> feel, you know. Right. But the moment we lean into that, I think yeah. those. It's what I saw yeah. SCU conference last night it's that it's it's that moments after the moments moments within the moments oh, yeah. those are the things that i think we 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 cannot pour it out on youtube yeah. i love it wow man levi thanks for stopping by man always a privilege to have you on the show honor and, uh yeah always man your your spirit is always so contagious and uh always learn so thank, thank you, you for, for having me and what you guys are doing and our partnership means a lot to us Love it. Any way we can serve, that's what we want to do. Hey, if you want to stay up to date with Levi, you can follow him on Instagram, Facebook, and X at Levi Lusco, right? Is that I'm the on best? TikTok, too. Yeah. You're on TikTok, too? You got me on TikTok. There we yeah. go. All right. All right. We got you there. So check out everything that he has, and uh, we're grateful you joined us today. Hope you have a great week. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today on Framework Leadership. If you're watching on YouTube right now, now would be a great time to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you can get more leadership content right into your YouTube feed. You can also check us out on Instagram at Kent underscore Ingle at Dr. Michael Steiner or on Twitter and YouTube at Kent Ingle. And hey, if you love great email newsletters, and I know that I do, you want to check out the Framework Leadership newsletter. Every single Friday drops in great tips to be a better leader, resources, thoughts right into your inbox. Check it out. You can sign up at kentingle.com. Make sure you hop on to there. Thank you so much for listening to Framework Leadership. Take care, everybody.